Hello everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Uh, it's time to get back into the In the News segment. And so we have an In the News tonight. And um, the person we're doing the In the News segment on is not my favorite and preferably would not have wanted to do it, but she is in spotlight right now. And so why not? Let's take a look at Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, Congresswoman from uh, the 14th District, I think, in um, <clears throat> in Georgia, North West Georgia, I believe. And um, hold on a second. I got to move something here. So we're going to take a look at her numerology. Her astrology, we do not have an accurate birth time, but we have a birth date and we can get a lot of information just from the positions of her planet. We'll look at her relationship to Donald Trump and we'll look at her relationship to the United States of America. So let's get started. All righty. Oh, slideshow. All right. This was the uh, picture I decided to use. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, born May 15th, 1974 in Millid Milledgeville, Georgia, time unknown. So let's take a look at her numerology. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene's name uh, that she was born with was Marjorie Taylor. Her first name, Marjorie, vibrates to a 44-8 vibration. That is a master number. And Taylor vibrates to a 28-1. When we separate her vowels and we add them all up, we get her inner, uh, her inner self, her, her, uh, her soul vibration, and we get a 28-1 vibration. So she is a one soul. One souls are not afraid to go out on their own. One souls are not um, afraid to initiate things. She is, in fact, um, very much an initiator, right? Um, her outer personality, her quiescent, her consonants, how we see her, we get a 44-8 vibration, 44-8. And that is the Four of Cups. The 28 one is the Two of Wands. We'll look at these cards as they come up. The 44 8 is a master number vibration. It's a uh, four is a crisis number. So, four, four, eight are uh, people who perhaps are good in crisis. Perhaps they create the crises that they're good in, uh, but her outer personality is an eight. And an eight is somebody who's uh, generally pretty serious about uh, their ambition. Eight can be a very ambitious number. So we have somebody here who's willing to do and, and say uh, whatever it takes to fulfill her ambitions. When we add these two vibrations together, we get her expression vibration, which is a 72 nine. Now nine can express itself um, in the in a positive aspect, nine is the healer and the teacher, and nine is the is the um, vibration of um, the humanitarian. Nine can also be um, the criminal because nine expresses in in the highest and the lowest vibration. When you have a nine in your chart, you are familiar with the highest of highs and often the lowest of lows. So we have a, a one soul with an eight eight out person eight vibration outer personality, and an expression of a nine of a nine. And I would probably tend towards um, somebody perhaps who's willing to do things that are against the law, perhaps. Okay. Um, now, if we add up her date of birth. May, 7, May 27, 1974, we get a 53-8 vibration. The 53-8 is the Knight of Swords. That is the knight that comes rushing in with his sword held high, rushing into the battle, feeling as though they have the right to do it. The problem with that vibration that 
that 43 eight vibrate excuse me 53 eight vibration is it's a vibration that's uh, sometimes associated with criminality criminality um, not always not everybody who has a 53 eight has criminality to worry about um, but what they can uh, and what they're learning because this is her life lesson and your life lesson you're learning how to do it um, are people that can rush into situations and before they know it, they've created more chaos. So these can be the chaos people, the people who think they're doing well, but all they bring is chaos, okay? Uh, so they can come from sort of pure intention. This is a possibility. Um, I don't know um, what she really believes, <laughs> honestly. Um, but when we look at her chart, you can see that it's very possible that she's delusional um, and coming from that place. Um, but she's definitely, she definitely exhibits a lot of um, shadow, a lot of shadow. Now, speaking of shadow, her shadow vibration, which we get from her first name, Marjorie, 44, and add the 27 of her day of birth, we get the shadow vibration or the eccentric angle. And we can see here, that we have a 71-8 eccentric angle. So she has an eight path of life and an eight shadow. So her eight, the expression of her eight will more than likely come from a darker place. And of course, eight can be great ambitions, you know, stepping on people to get ahead. It doesn't matter who it is. She's going to step on all of them, right? Okay. The, the 718 is also the three of pentacles. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we, we flip the cards, um, you know, the, the, the three of pentacles is dark money, right? Dark money. So when you have, uh, and, and also the 718 vibration is a Capricorn vibration. And so it is a dark Capricorn vibration because we're dealing with the shadow. And dark Capricorn can be power at any cost, right? So we can see this expressed in her as well. You know, she does commercials where she's shooting cans with an AR-15, but she's talking about Republican, she's talking about Democrats, she's talking about socialists, she's talking about real people, um, and then you and then blowing these cans up, right? Because she can shoot an AR-15, I guess, whatever it was that she was shooting. So so obviously the way that she portrays herself is somebody who has little uh, care for um, the rules and is somewhat of a rule breaker. And we will see that in her chart as well. Um, so one of the other interesting things is she does have an eight karma number eight karma. So she has uh, a lot of eight. She has an outer personality eight. She has her path is an eight. Her shadow is an eight and she has an eight karma. So she's, this is something that she's come in to deal with in this lifetime, this eight energy. And eight is as you sow, so shall you reap. So while she is sowing what she sows, she will also reap that. And that's part of the lesson, okay? And perhaps because it's also a shadow, her eight is, a, she has a sh shadow eight, she may have yet to learn that. But when we get to the tree of life, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, if we look over here, she is now, uh, let's see, it's, uh, this was her last birthday in May of 2022. Um, and she turned, let's see, if, 48 years old. Uh, she's going to be 49 on her next birthday in May. Um, but right now she's in a 3811 vibration um, for this, um, this year period from her birthday to her birthday. So 11 is, uh, is a justice vibration, right? 11 is, is, is justice. But this is this vibration that she's under right now, this temporary yearly vibration is a 3811 and that is the queen of uh the queen of cups the queen of cups she's right here right now at this time um between um 
January 27th to her birthday. Um, she's in a, a sub period of seven um, and seven is uh, introspection. She doesn't strike me as particularly introspective, but that's the number that she's in. Um, but because of her age, because she's now 48 years old, she's actually on this line right here. And this line began when she was 45. And that's when she ran for, uh, for office. She moved on to this 18-9 line. The 18-9 line is the moon card. It is the card of lunacy, lunacy. Uh, so uh, she's a nut for sure. She's on a nine-year line. When she's 54, uh, she will uh, change and move on to a nine vibration. But right now, until she and until she's 54, which will be what, 2028, 20, I think, uh, she's on this 18-9 line. Okay, so let's take a look at her um, her tree of life because I want to point a few things out. And uh, on the right here, we have her chart. So we'll look at both things. But uh, what I've done is I've taken the numbers that we've gotten from her name. And here's her soul vibration, the 28-1. This is located on the tree of life in a sephirah called Hukma. Hukma means wisdom. Uh, it is associated with the planet Uranus. So her soul is in a way connected to that Uranian energy. And what is Uranus? Uranus is the great awakener, right? Uranus is the chaos maker, okay? It, it creates chaos. Um, you don't know what's going to happen when Uranus is around. Anything is possible. Anything can happen. Uh, and it's usually quite surprising. Her quiescent, right? Her outer personality is a 44.8. This is located in the separate Hesed. Hesed is associated with the planet Jupiter. She has Jupiter in Pisces. She has Jupiter in Pisces. And Jupiter in Pisces can be a true believer, can be a true believer. Uh, one of the major issues that she has with her Jupiter in Pisces is that it's square her nodes, when you have Jupiter square the nodes like this, sometimes you can have issues with truth, with truth. Now the resolution node, uh, so when you have a, um, um, a planet square the nodes, that planet doesn't get to fully express itself. During the lifetime, it has a tendency to flip back and forth to the North node, then back to the South node, then back to the North node. The south node is where is the release point. It's what we're learning to let go of or move away from. At the same time, the south node also holds talents and abilities that we have. So it's not like you forget everything about the south node. You take the talents forward, um, but you let go of those things that hold you back in the south node. And she has a south node in Gemini. And that what could hold her back is her own mind, is her own mind. And then we have the North Node in Sagittarius, which is the direction of her destiny. This is about sort of fording a new path or even figuring out what the truth is and a philosophy of life that works for her. Now, I'm not saying her philosophy of life seems to be working just fine for her. So I'm not saying uh, anything about that, but uh, it does not really work for us. It's working for her, I guess. Um, but when you have this, you never fully um, integrate this Jupiter energy. And Jupiter can be about truth, but it can also be about your intuitive facility. So somebody with a Jupiter square the nose can have a problem with the way they see things. The way they're psyching things out is not correct. The resolution node for this setup is actually the north node in in Sagittarius. So she needs to apply herself to the North Node. However, the North Node in Sag would indicate an expansion of what you know, an expansion of experience, an expansion learning. It's about learning about the bigger world. The South Node is uh, in Gemini can be very parochial, kind of stay like this is the way it's been. We're not going to. It's it's the past. It's the past. It's the past, right? 
Now, what's interesting is that uh, she also has her expression here in, um, in Hesed. So her expression vibration is also connected to that Jupiter. But both her soul, her quiescent, and her expression. So those are the three major vibrations that we come in with via our name, which indicates past lives, past issues, soul, what the soul's been working on, et cetera. So this is all about the past for her. And it's all located in the pillar of the past. This pillar is considered the pillar of the past. The masculine side, it's the pillar of the past. She has her path of life in Tipereth. That is about coming from the heart. It is that 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 knight of swords. So when you are coming, so this is really about your intention. What is your intention? So intention is everything. Even if somebody creates chaos, which the knight of swords can certainly do, if their intentions are pure, it's less of an issue. If their intentions are impure, then we're really talking about criminality here. Okay. And then we have her shadow over here, 718. This is in Bayana. Bayana is the, the separate of the divine feminine. And it is associated with the planet Saturn. Where does she have Saturn? She has Saturn right here. And she has it in Cancer. Saturn is its difficult position for Saturn. I don't know what kind of relationship she had with her mom. If you read her Wikipedia, Wikipedia page, doesn't even mention her mother. I had to look around for, for where her mother was from. Um, I know that she worked for her father and her father's her father's work and and the like. Saturn in um, Saturn in Cancer can be a lack of of nurturance. Can be a lack of nurturance. But she does have Saturn in a pretty tight square to Pluto. And Saturn square Pluto, especially in a last quarter square, which is what this is, this can be ambition, plain and simple and blind and um, whatever. Okay, <laughs> whatever you want to say. So she has this powerful square. Squares drive you. Squ squares drive you. And she's very, very driven. She also has here. Um, if you look, she has Chiron conjunct Venus in Aries, and it's opposite Uranus. So she has a Chiron-Uranus opposition. That's sometimes seen with mental instability. Uh, and then she has the Venus-Uranus uh, opposition. And this is somebody who will often be attracted to perhaps unusual people, but there's not a lot of stability here. And, and and there is quite a bit of chaos just in general within these these planets in in and in these signs it's it's her and the people that she relates to right so we have that and also this is actually creates a t-square with her mars she has mars in cancer now she has venus in aries and mars in cancer um mars likes being in aries venus likes being in cancer. Mars doesn't like being in cancer. So it's like her feminine planet is in a masculine side and her masculine planet is in a feminine side. So I feel like she has some frustration around how to express herself. Like she's a woman, but she wants to act like a man, right? Or she expresses herself like a, like a sailor, you know, and saying that things like Biden is full of shit. And I mean, th this is, this is there's no respect here right there's no respect for authority at all and and sometimes we can see that with with uranus with with heavy duty uranus and she does have heavy duty uranus so we have this giant t square here with chiron and 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 venus square mars um the mars and venus square is a last quarter crisis in consciousness square so in its nature it is um uh, re uh, rebellious. It's a rebellious square between Venus and Mars. And um, and then we have Uranus here and in, in, in um, Libra squaring Mars. Mars square Uranus, that is another unstable action. Unstable action. So she has two T-squares, 
one between Venus, Chiron, op opposing uh, Uranus and, and Mars squaring that. She has uh, Jupiter squaring her nodes. That's another T-square that she has. Um, and then she has this powerful and very tight square between Saturn and Pluto, a very ambitious person. Now, she also has a, um, a hammer of Thor in her chart. And the head of the hammer is Neptune in Sag, Neptune in Sag. And we're looking at her, um, her Chiron and her Venus really square her Mars. So we have Venus, Mars, and Chiron uh, as sort of the ends of the hammer and the handle of the hammer being Neptune. Neptune and Sag can be somewhat delusional. Neptune, always, there's always that possibility of delusion with Neptune. Um, okay, so let's see what else we, what else I want to say about her chart. Um, so because she has her shadow in Bina, um, her intuition is not fully formed. Like she really only knows how to create chaos. She doesn't know how to make something out of it. Um, that that has stability, Saturn, right? So this is the Saturn energy. And of course, with Saturn and Cancer squaring that, that Pluto, uh, we can see a lot of stress on that Saturn. And uh, this path here, the Tipperth is associated with the sun. Now she has her sun in Gemini. She, has her, she also has her south node in Gemini and she has her Mercury in Gemini. So this woman knows how to talk. She talks a mean streak. Um, it looks like she has a stationary node. Stationary nodes are usually seen in people who come into their power later in life, later in life. Um, okay, so let's continue on. So what I did here is we have Marjorie Taylor Greene on the outside and we have Donald Trump on the inside because they have some pretty interesting connections in their chart. And the other thing I've done here is I've created composite, uh, soul, quiescent, composite expression and composite path. And you just take Donald Trump's soul, which is a 16 and add it to her soul, which is a 28. And we come up with a 44, I think. Anyway, did I get that right? Let's see, um, 16 and 28. 44. Okay. So their, when their souls are aligning with each other, they're creating this energy. This is a Jupiter energy again, but it's, it's, it's the, the four of cups is generally about divine discontent. This is somebody who's never quite content because they don't know how to receive from spirit. They're too self-isolated in a way. Their life is too um, closed off in their own sort of bubble, right? And it is an emotional bubble because we're dealing with cups. They're composite quiescent, the devil, the devil. So this is being chained to um, the lower the lower realms, right? Not working from your highest and best intentions, right? Um, this is being um, uh, chained, right? Chained, but but doing it out of choice. There's always a choice with the devil. Their expression together is a fourteen five. Now this is a healing card. But this can be a warning against going to extremes. So this can be a card of extremity. It doesn't help them, but they can create, create quite a bit of chaos with this. And then their path, their, their composite path is the hanged man. And this is about looking at things from a different perspective, uh, affecting things that you can, uh, figuring out what you can change and doing it and figuring out what you can't and letting it go, right? Letting it go. Uh, and being connected to source. This does not really, this does not describe either Donald Trump or um, or her as I can see them in what they do and how they how they act. 
Um, but it is uh, the path that maybe they will teach each other, right? Sur the path of surrender. Now, let's go to the chart. This is Donald Trump's chart. We have an accurate birth time on Trump. And uh, but again, we don't have one on Marjorie. Now, she does have a Leo moon in this chart. This is a noon chart that I gave her. And I would dollars to donuts bet this woman has a Leo moon. Okay. Um, even when she was with her furs, you know, to, to, at the, at the, um, the, what do you call, uh, the, the, um, state of the union address, right? She had her furs when she was, when they were doing the, the, the voting, she was wearing like a red suit with these, like, these, like, you know, very like fashionable, like, you know, that kind of thing. So she wants to be seen. She wants to be seen. Right. Um, and so the Leo moon makes sense. And it kind of makes sense that even it, that this might actually be what her moon is. We have her moon here conjunct Trump's Mars, Trump's Mars. Now, oops, sorry, the wrong way. Oh, crap. Ola. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm so sorry. Let me do this again. Is this it? Yep. Excuse me. Uh, okay, we're back. <laughs> I got too excited. I was moving around too much. Um, so we have her moon on his Mars. Um, here's her Mars sitting right on his Saturn and Venus, Saturn and Venus. So, um, okay, I'll, I'll tell you what I think this all is. Her Saturn sitting on his Mercury. Um, but this is really where it gets interesting. Her nodes are conjunct his nodes, but they're opposite. Her, her north node is in Sag, his north node is in Gemini. So they have a nodal reversal, okay? But, uh, and that's because of their age difference. But when you see nodal reversals like this, okay, you know that these two people have come in. This is karmic for them. This is karmic for them. And um, we have, uh, let's see, right here, her Pluto sits right on his Neptune. What this feels like to me is that she's trying to usurp the way he does things uh, in order to be successful. I feel as though she will be his, um, she will be his mouthpiece to a certain extent. I think that's part of, of, of their connection to each other. Um, all right. So let's take a look at her in the United States, because this is interesting as well. Um, this is in the center. We have the Sibley chart and we have her chart on the outside. Uh, we can see that her son is conjunct Uranus in the United States chart. Remember, Uranus is that great awakener energy. Her south node is conjunct um, the Mars of the United States. This is probably her love affair with guns and perhaps it gets expressed, right? Um, we have Saturn here making a conjunction to Venus. Venus in a chart is women and Saturn is, uh, is um, restriction, restriction. So her reign, we'll call it for a lack of a better word, is not going to be good for the most part for women. It's also on Jupiter. So this Jupiter Venus, this sort of soft, like compassionate energy that America is known for. It's also known to be a warmonger. So it's it's got like a dual personality, right? But she has her Saturn right there. So that so she's not going to bring out our warm and cozy side. She's going to bring out our more warlike side with her south node there on Mars. Um, and her Chiron is conjunct Chiron of the United States. And the Chiron of the United States can be that energy of exceptionalism, thinking that we're exceptional. Um, the Chiron in Aries can be the wound of being too warlike. Uh, and of course, 
It's in the fourth house, Chiron and Aries, the attack of indigenous, and then the, then the enslavement of Africans that built the country. Um, and you know we are we have an issue with uh, kind of claiming who we are and seeing ourselves uh, for what we've done in the past and who we are. And we kind of have to come to terms with that in order to to really heal as it were. Um, but one thing I want to do point out here is she does have her Mercury in Gemini, which is a very powerful placement for Gemini uh, for Mercury. Trying the United States moon. This is the Sibley chart we have this, this moon. And so on a certain level, she does speak to a certain population of America. She can, uh, and of course it's grievance just like um just like it was for Trump, right? But um what else do I want to say here? Um, she does have Jupiter trine uh, the sun. So she does sort of speak for a certain population of people, for, for a certain population of people. But I feel as though perhaps it's not exactly, um, it, it's not exactly for people's benefit uh, with her. It's for her own benefit. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about what's coming up and um, I need to do a different share here. So give me a moment and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, hold on one minute. I'm trying to, I'm trying to move something out of my way. Okay, that doesn't help. Okay, anyway. All right, so this is Marjorie's uh, chart and I have an Aries rising because we don't know her birth time or anything like that. So we're just going to use the Aries rising chart just to see what's what's going on with her as far as her um, um, the transits that are coming up to her chart. First of all, Mars is in Gemini. Mars has been in Gemini since August and it's going to go out at the end of March um, and then move into Cancer. So it's been sort of fomenting here in this third house, um, going over her south node a couple of times. Uh, it's gone over her south node um, one, two, two times. It's one more time to go over the south node. Um, and so this third house, there's it, the mind has been very, been very active. Um, Mars and Gemini, a lot of different ideas, but going back and forth and and the like. So. This is not particularly, um, um, it's, it can be irritating, but it can bring up all the past stuff and all the past grievances and the like. Here's Chiron now. This is a transit fourth today. I think that today's the 10th, right? Yeah. Uh, so we have Chiron at 13, but Chiron is going to be coming over. She's going to be having her Chiron return just after the United States has its Chiron return. And I believe Chiron return for the U.S. is 2024. Uh, so that's still coming. Um, but we do have Jupiter going to be going over that Chiron. So Jupiter expands things. And over Chiron, it could very well expand her wound, her wound. Um, what else did I want to say? There was something else that was... Okay, um, Pluto, 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 Pluto. Okay, so here's Pluto. Um, Pluto is about to, excuse me. Okay. Uh, Pluto is about to move into the sign of Aquarius, sign of Aquarius. And um, Saturn is about to move into Pisces. Saturn is about mo moving to Pisces. Um, Saturn in Pisces is going to be squaring her sun, squaring her sun, and it's a last quarter crisis in consciousness square. Um, Oh, 
I'm trying to remember. There was something I wanted to point out besides that. Um, Neptune. Okay, I guess that's all I wanted to point out. I thought there was more. I thought there was more. Um, so, you know, she's, as to what is going to happen to her, is she going to continue to be a, a thorn in, in folks' sides? I think so. I think so. I think she's going to continue to create a lot of havoc. It's going to be interesting to see um, if something happens with Trump uh, or when something happens with Trump, something where he actually gets held accountable for something. Um, what's going to happen to her. But um, as it stands, she's actually in pretty good position. Uh, she's positioned herself pretty good. And um, they obviously have something that they need to work through. And, uh, you know, hopefully they will be held accountable. She doesn't have, I think, the same grace as he does. Um, she doesn't have things in her chart that protect her the way he has things in his chart that protect him, mainly his Jupiter, his stationary Jupiter, trining all his uh, his his uh, Gemini planets. Um, but I would say that she's mostly um, an energy of chaos. And um, and unbridled ambition and uh, criminality. So uh, it's in her chart. <laughs> now I probably didn't have to tell you that, right? Because you're like, yeah, yeah. So let's um, for shits and giggles, let's just do a quick card read on her and see what what's ahead for her. We'll just pick a couple of cards. So we're looking at Marjorie Taylor Green and what's ahead for Marjorie. What's ahead for Marjorie Taylor Green in 2023? 2023. We'll just do the year. We'll do a, a, a I think a Celtic cross. So let me just shuffle these up. I'm using the crow tarot. Did you hear my bird? That was just my bird. Speaking of the crow tarot. We call it the parrot tarot. Maybe I should get. Maybe I should do a a deck for Apollo. Everything would be screaming. Almost, almost ready. Almost ready. She really is abhorrent, honestly. Well, you know, women are rising up in the ranks and they're not all going to be Jacinda Ardern's or uh, Pamela Harris's or AOC's or, you know, whoever you might think is a good, um, a good uh, leader as far as females. There's going to be the, uh, the, the Greens and Green is very ambitious. Bobart is kind of, uh, she sort of goes along to get along kind of energy, it seems to me. She'll do whatever she's asked to do. But uh, Green has ambitions. We have the two of wands here. So this is her interacting with somebody else. This is her soul vibration. The two of wands is her soul vibration. So she's, she's, she's I don't want to say colluding with somebody. Now, this could be McCarthy or this could be Trump. But um, one of them, let's see the challenge. Strength, strength. This is um, located on the tree of life in the throat chakra. In fact, both her expression and her quiescent in Hesed is located energetically in her throat chakra. So this is a woman who has a lot to say. Um, but the question is, does she have the strength? Does, does she have the um, ability to I'm not sure she's coming from a, of a well, first of all, I don't think any of the Republicans are coming from a place of strength. 
So she's sort of on the top of a heap, but it's kind of like a dung heap, right? So let's see what's underneath it. A high priestess. Could this be her? Could this be her? Um, something is hidden. There's something that we don't know about yet. There's something that we don't know yet. Let's see what's in the past. We have the King of Pentacles reversed. Um, I feel like this could be um, greed, avarice, that kind of stuff, uh, that kind of energy uh, in the past. Let's see what's in the sky for her. We have the Six of Cups, nostalgia. Nostalgia. She's going to be talking about, you know, what it, how it used to be in the old days, you know, when, I don't know, white, old white guys were in charge. Oh, wait a minute. Old white guys are still in charge. But when they were more in charge, <laughs> nobody was giving them flack. See what's in the immediate future. We have the Seven of Pentacles. She's amassing her money. She's, she's a good, see, one of the things that she's good at is making money because she's willing to say anything. She doesn't care what her words, what her words, she doesn't care if what she says ends up killing somebody. She doesn't care. She feels that she's, she's right. She's right in doing what she's doing. Right. So um, she's, she's forking in the dough. She's forking in the dough. How it's seen from the outside. She's seen as a fool, certainly. She's seen as a fool, but the fool is also an, an energy associated with the planet Uranus. So she's a disruptive fool. Her domestic situation. Well, isn't she the queen of the May? She is on top of the world right now. She is. She thinks that she's got it all and a bag of chips. Let's see her hopes and fears. Five of pentacles, a destitution, bankruptcy, that I would imagine is a fear. And let's see the outcome. We have the ace of swords, but it is reversed. Justice, justice. Um, I think that this is actually a little bit worse. To me, this feels like this, this, the, the sword is stabbing her. Instead of rising up with the sword, she's being impaled by the sword. Let's see if we can pick a major arcana, the Ten of Cups, the Knight of Swords, that's her path of life, and the Seven of Wands, fighting off all comers. Let's see what's underneath it. Okay, we have Heartbreak. The Eight of Pentacles. I mean, the Eight of Wands. Uh, sorry, Eight of Swords. So this is fear. This can be fear, but it's more about having to utilize your intuition to get out of a sticky situation. Her problem is that her intuition is off. Her shadow is in her third eye, and so she doesn't see clearly. And then we have the Seven of Cups, which is delusion. So what this whole thing really is based on is that she is quite delusional. She is quite delusional. I think that she thinks that she's in better position than she actually is. Um, and of course, I guess, depending on how much, uh, you know, press she gets, everybody's talking about her now. So with people like this, the more you talk about them, and that's one of the reasons why I don't like doing readings on these people anymore. Um, but I figured it was a good idea to look and see what, what, you know, why, why, why is she here now? She's, she's here, uh, well, for her own lesson, certainly. Uh, and what is she showing us? Uh, she's showing us that, um, she's showing us what really not to do. <laughs> you ask me. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that was a good reading or not, but that's what came up. So she's, she's, she's delusional. She's definitely delusional, um, but she's more than delusional. I think she's just super ambitious and she's willing to step on anybody. And she thinks that Trump is her ticket to props vice president. Uh, but Trump would actually have to win. Like he'd have to run, win the, the, the thing and then get her as a vice president. And then they'd have to win um the uh, the actual 
um, presidential election, right? Which is not going to happen because he's he's not he's not he's not uh, he's not going to he I don't know if he's going to run. I don't see him. I think he's done for. So if she if he's her major vehicle to success, um, once he gets derailed, she'll be derailed as well. And uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how uh, we'll see how we do with all of this. But uh, my feeling is, if you learn the lesson, then you don't have to do it anymore. So let's learn the lesson that she's trying to teach us: ambition. Uh, you know, stepping on people isn't the way. Are we doing that in our own? lives are we stepping on others well probably not you and me but what about the united states does the united states bully i mean chiron and aries is the is the is the energy of bullying and she's a big bully and we're a big bully and we have to come to terms with the fact that we are uh kind of a little bit too militaristic you know we think that sometimes we're coming from the right place but um the people who run the the comp the government it's not a government formed by the people. It's a government by the people who pay our representatives. And those are the lobbyists. And so that's really the truth. Uh, and of course, one of the biggest lo lobbies besides like drugs is um, um, the um, military industrial complex. So we have to think about that as a country. If we If we are truly... Uh, you know, and it'd be one thing if if you wanted to be the person, the law, right? You wanted to be the law, but you have to be willing to follow it. And we're not always willing to follow it. So um, she's reflecting something in the United States. That's why she's up there. That's why Trump is there. That's why they're all there to show us our best nature and our worst nature. And we get to pick. Do you want to you want the best or do you want the worst? And um, and then, you know, in our own personal lives, we can do that as well. You know, a higher intention, the road to higher intention is the road uh, that we must follow. And it's getting more and more obvious. And um, we'll see if Margie gets the, me the memo on that. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, like and subscribe if you would. Anybody's interested, I am having a beginner's Kabbalah class that's going to be starting in March. Uh, I haven't put it on my website yet, but I will, and I will make announcements and the like. If you'd like to support me, you can give me a thumbs up. You can like the video, or I have a Patreon page. Uh, you can become a patron for as little as $5 a month, and it helps support the work that I do here on YouTube. And you get some extra stuff on Patreon as well. Um, but it's always a pleasure, and I hope this was um, informative, uh, a little entertaining, and uh, maybe a little bit relieving that she's not going to be around forever. <sighs> All right, guys, take care. Namaste.